Good day everyone! My name is Georgia Alessandra P. Canaveral, your instructor for today. So for today's lesson, we are going to discuss the case-based learning. Before we start, these are the following objectives. At the end of the lesson, the students are expected to first, define the case-based learning. Second, explain the importance of case-based learning in teaching social studies. And lastly, integrate the disciplines in social studies in applying case-based learning. What is case-based learning? Case-based learning is a pedagogical approach that involves presenting learners with real-life cases or scenarios that they analyze and solve using their existing knowledge and experience. So the basic idea is to provide students with authentic problems to solve rather than simply presenting them with theoretical concepts to memorize. So what are the things that a student can develop when we use a case based learning so in case based learning it can help students to develop their critical thinking skills and problem solving skills by encouraging them to analyze complex situations and apply their knowledge in a practical way so it also helps students to understand how theoretical concepts apply in real world how why because what is the opposite of case based learning so basically the opposite of case based learning is the traditional lecture based learning wherein teacher presents an information while students are just taking notes the information without any direct involvement in real world context that is why in case-based learning it can enhance their uh, ability to transfer knowledge into real world contexts what is the importance of using case-based learning in teaching social studies Case-based learning can be a highly effective approach in teaching social studies as it can help students to develop a deeper understanding of historical and current events and issues as well as the complex social, political, and economic factors that shape them. So in teaching social studies, case-based learning is an effective approach. Why? Because it molds students to view a situation or a problem holistically. Second, develop their critical thinking skills. Third, deepen their understanding of complex issues or social issues and apply their knowledge in practical ways. So there are several reasons why case-based learning is an effective teaching method in teaching social studies. First, we have the increased student engagement. Why? Of course, because it involves using real-world scenarios or cases to make learning more engaging and relevant to students. So it is relatable, right? Second, it improves critical thinking skills. Why? Because it requires students to analyze complex issues and make connections between different aspects of the case or the factors within the case. Third, deeper understanding of historical and cultural issues because it allows students to explore complex historical and cultural issues. That is why it is both engaging and informative. Fourth, it promotes active learning. Why? Because it encourages students to take an active role in their own learning by requiring them to analyze, interpret, and apply their knowledge in a most meaningful way. Lastly, it encourages collaboration because in case-based learning, it often involves group work which can help foster collaboration and communication skills. So here's a step-by-step -step guide to creating a case-based lesson plan in social studies. First, select an appropriate case. Choose a case that is relevant to the topic that you are teaching and that will engage students' interest that is aligned with the curriculum guide. Second, identify learning objectives. Determine the specific learning objectives that you want to achieve through the case-based learning activity. Third, develop questions and prompts. So create a series of questions and prompts that guide students through the case study. 
Just for example, you have a case about the rise inflation in the Philippines. So these are the example of guide questions. First, we have what are the economic factors that play in the case study? Second, what is the geographic context of the case study and how does it affect the situation? Third, what are the political structures and institutions involved in the case study? Fourth, what philosophical concepts or ethical principles are relevant to the case study? Fifth, what is the context of the case study? And lastly, what are the possible solutions in the case study? Next, we have to facilitate group work. So as a teacher, we are the facilitator in this learning because case-based learning is a student-centered learning. Lastly, assess student learning. So we have to use a variety of assessment tools to evaluate student learning such as rubrics. So by following these steps, teachers can create a more dynamic and engaging learning experience that promotes critical thinking skills, deep understanding of historical and cultural issues, and of course, collaborative learning. So I have activity for you. Let's try this. I have prepared a case study. It's all about the rice import and export of the Philippines. And I want you to present your case through these guide questions. And of course, I want you to identify which statement or geography, politics, economics, and philosophy. And of course, I want you to make a possible solution of the case, the rice import and export of the Philippines. And of course, I want to grade you with basics. So I have a rubric here. Case study, the rice import and export of the Philippines. So these are the following factors that affects the case, such as the geography, the politics, the economics, and philosophy. And this is the possible solution of the case the rice import and export of the Philippines. By providing students with real-world scenarios to explore, teachers can create a more dynamic and interactive learning environment that promotes deep understanding and long-term retention. This ends my discussion about the case-based learning. This is your instructor, Georgia Alessandra P. Canaveral. Thank you for watching!